Hey, Math 43, I had a question coming out of chapter three, number 91. And here we were told two events are independent, right? Now, if before I even get going on A or B, if I'm told two events are independent, we pick up formula three and formula four automatically. We can use them in addition to one and two. So because they're independent, I know equality holds here. I, you can, ugh, that's not words. I can use the conditional formula, the multiplication rule in either direction. So I get those three versions of formula three and four that I get to use regardless uh, of what's being asked of me in addition to formula one and two. All right, so part A says rewrite the addition rule with the fact, using the fact that you know Y and Z are independent of each other. All right, so here I am. This right here is straight up, that is the addition rule, right? Addition rule. But where I can move further in this is if you look at what I have in red here, right? And actually, let me color code this. So I'll put red. So I knew the probability of Y and Z. If we look at it, the probability of Y and Z was equal to the probability of Y times the probability of Z. So that's how I substituted and opted to rewrite the addition rule. So you can kind of just put this in your tool belt, right? If two events are independent, this is what formula one simplifies to. All right. or it simplifies in the sense that you don't have to find the and because you can just multiply those, those probabilities. So that's what they're asking for in part A. Now, in part B, we're given some information. So let's write down what we were given. We were told in part B that the or, we were told the probability of Y or Z was 0.71. So we were given that. And then we were also told that the probability of Y was 0.42. So here you see me writing our new version of the addition rule, right? The, the equation that we derived in part A. And now I'm going to start to fill things in. So again, let me color code some stuff so we stay consistent. So I'm going to do probability of Y or Z. That was 0.71. And then let's, we haven't used purple in a while. We'll go purple for probability of Y. So I'm going to put a purple in here. I'm going to put a purple in here, right? And then I'm going to put the yellow in here. And the question that was asked of us is, hey, can you find the probability of Z? So this is what I'm trying to find. Okay, and if you look at it algebraically, if you just look right here, the only thing left in this equation is the probability of Z. So if you think about it as an algebraic equation, we can do this. So I'm solving this equation, and I think it's right here that we start to get a little bit messed up. So let me, let me talk about this. Let me go on a side journey. So if I had something like 0.71 equals 0.42 plus X, minus 0.42 times x, all right? And I'm using x instead of probability of z. Your, your game plan there is to move everything that doesn't have a variable attached to it to one side of the equation and then combine these like terms. And I actually tried to show it here, all right? I think where we run into problems is the fact that, and I'm gonna, again, color code the bejesus out of this. I think it's that we, we have trouble just seeing that that term has a coefficient of, it's, it's got a secret one in front of it. So here's what I mean by that. I'm gonna go on another side journey and I promise we'll get back to the original. If I told you something like, hey, we had 100X minus 42X, you would say, oh, I'm gonna take 100 minus 42 and I'm gonna say that's 58. So if I have X by itself minus 0.42X, which is really what I have right here, you really have one X minus 0.42x, which if you do 1 minus 0.42 on your calculator, you're going to get 0.58. So that becomes 0.58x. All right, so if I wanted to simplify this, I would have 0.71 equaling 0.42 minus 0.58x. And then again, I move this over here, right, through subtraction. I divide both sides by negative 0.58. All right, or excuse me, positive 0.58, my bad. My bad, that's definitely positive. Okay, so going with that, that is what we have in this case here. So I'm gonna subtract the 0.42 over here and that's where I get the 0.29. And what I'm left with on the right side of the equation, let me go blue on this, I have a probability of Z minus 0.42 probabilities of Z. And when I do one probability of Z minus 0.42 probability of Z, I am getting 0.58 probabilities of Z's left. And that's what you see me working through right here. And then what I'm gonna do is divide both sides, right? I'm gonna solve for point or probability of Z, divide both sides by 0.58, and then I'm gonna find out that the probability of Z is just 0.5, all right? So there's a lot of algebra going on in there, but that is how you solve 
number 91. All right. Thanks so much, everyone. Bye.